everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are in one of my favorite places of my zoo, Zoodesia Zoo. We are inside the Australian Bird Aviary. Look how beautiful it is. We've got all of the Gouldian finches flying around. We have several varieties of parrots flying around. There's even some kiwi, which are not Australian birds, but I don't have a different place to put them. So they're inside this big aviary right now. We even have a little kiwi right behind my head right there ah it's so cute <gasps> look there's a goldie and finch egg behind us there's a goldie and finch egg behind us oh my gosh i'm so excited so i thought we would spend a little bit of time in the australian aviary today and i also have something new to show you guys in just a second <gasps> it's a birdie egg it's a little goldie and finch egg oh my goodness i'm so excited will it hatch Oh, it didn't hatch. Fooey. All right. Well, we'll see if we can collect up some more eggs. Maybe hatch up a few different eggs. Maybe um, be able to see if there's any parrots. We might gather up some of the eggs and take them to the egg research center today. Since this is just a stop off before we head back home and we go in and we gather up the glowstone dust so we can head back over to the safari zone and complete the last of the giraffe, the little like giraffe pin exhibit pieces. That way we can get started on the huge safari zone, the actual piece that we want to do where we have zebras and ostriches maybe a little pin somewhere I need to make somewhere good for the lions to be able to hang out so we'll figure out a good spot to maybe tuck the lions away from the other animals and yeah so those are some of our goals it should be a really fun day I also need to take fig the pig let's see there he is fig the pig the pig who caught himself on fire in relic ruins and we rescued him from under a, a fig tree while he was like burning to death we need to take him and we need to put him in in with pigment fern so that pigment fern can have a new friend not to mention i also want to cure uh tarzan jane and turk who are the zombie villagers that we caught over by the giraffe exhibit and i've actually been thinking it would be really cool to build them a gigantic tree house over at the giraffe exhibit so we'll definitely be looking into that as well but enough chitter chatter let's look at these beautiful little finches these are gouldian finches and they are actually modeled after my real life finches this one is the same color as my little starburst who unfortunately passed away recently it was so sad but that's okay it's the cycle of life he was an old little guy and that's why we're going to collect up some eggs and see if we can hatch them into new birds. These are the tree cavities where the Goulian finches uh, usually nest. They nest inside of tree cavities. Very specific kind of birds. They won't nest anywhere else. So if they don't have a tree that has a right shaped hole, they'll just not nest, which is not good for their population. And one of the reasons that those adorable little tweets are actually endangered in the wild. Oh, and it's raining. Oh, look, and there's a cliff pig. Wow. Look how pretty it is. Inside the aviary while it rains. I was looking at the stars a second ago and I actually wanted to show you guys how beautiful the night sky is when we're inside the aviary. Oh look, and this is also the glass. You can walk across the glass bridge in the aviary. Isn't it so cool? Oh yeah, it's another egg. Maybe I should just collect these eggs and then, is there an egg back here? No, no eggs back here. I do hear one of the owls though. But maybe I should just collect these Gouldian Finch eggs and put some blaze powder on them. If we warm them up with blaze powder, there's a higher likelihood that they'll hatch into more beautiful Gouldian Finches that we can add into our gorgeous aviary here. Oh, and look, here's more of the parrots. We've got parrots and you can hear somewhere around here is actually, hello parrot. Oh, I thought that was an egg, but it's just it's just a mushroom. It is a delicious portobello mushroom, actually. You can actually cook those into some really yummy things. I, I wonder if we... <gasps> there's an egg! All right. We found a parrot egg. Oh, look, and there's a little mole. Oh, that's so cute. But I wonder if I should start a mushroom farm of some kind. In fact, let's go ahead and put that on my clipboard. I haven't used my clipboard to put down ideas that I have had for quite a while. So let's do mushroom farm. There we go. All right. And then let's go ahead... And come up. Ah, look, there's an owl. All right, there's an owl. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys and I found a whole bunch of kiwis and parrots. I think they're stuck. Okay, let's try to get these kiwis and parrots out of this hole. Do I have any any free safari nuts? I do. I have like two, two, three free safari nuts left. All right. So I think we need to move this fern for a second. Aluna, is that where you went? Aluna is our mama kiwi. And she actually laid an egg that we hatched into three triplet kiwis. And yeah, kiwis don't usually work like that, you guys. They lay one egg at a time, and it's usually the size of their body. It's so impressive. Aluna, we should add in a picture pretty soon that is of a kiwi with its egg. Like, 
the x-ray of a kiwi while it has its egg inside of it. It's called gravid when a bird is, has an egg inside that they're getting ready to lay. But there are some pretty cool x-rays out there of kiwis that have eggs inside of their body still before they lay them. And you can just see like all the poor little female kiwis organs are just like shoved up to one side and the egg takes up the majority of her internal body space. So it was impressive enough that you laid an egg in the first place, Aluna, but then that it hatched into triplets, that was just awesome. All right, we're gathering up some more eggs. Oh, and there's some owls. I need to go finish rescuing these birds from back here, though. All right, so let's go ahead. You guys, how did you do this, huh? How did you do this? I need to see if I have, like, a spare leaf so I can block that section off. Oh, there we go. They're starting to figure it out. All right, or maybe they're nesting back there. You know what? Maybe I should just leave it be. Maybe they're nesting. Maybe I should build a nest for that back corner. Do I have enough sticks? Because we could build a little nest really quickly to put in with the birds. I do have a crafting table and I do have some acacia wood. So let's build a little nest just real fast to help those guys out. And you can actually build nests for the birds by getting a bunch of sticks and putting them like that. And then we'll go ahead and we will just put the nest because it seems like this is a pretty popular spot for them. We'll just chuck a nest down in there. In fact, let's put out a couple more nests because I don't think I have any actual nest sprinkled around inside of our aviary. And that's silly because our birds will actually na lay <laughs> lay nest. <laughs> no, I knew that was wrong. I was starting to say it. I was like, no, Siri. No, that's not what you're trying to say. Our birds will actually lay eggs. Oh, dear. And I'm smishing all the ferns. Hello, sweetie. Little kiwi. You're so cute. But they will actually lay eggs inside of the nest if we put nests down for them. So instead of leaving the eggs like all over the ground like so, oh, do you want a nest over here too? All right, here you go. I'm going to put a little nest over there. <gasps> Look, and the parrot has already gone into the nest. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so it looks like there are a few spots. Do you want a nest over here? Oh dear, this little owl has laid something. It probably wants a nest. Here, I'm going to pick you up and then I'm going to put you back down. All right. And you now have a nest. There we go. But they actually will lay eggs inside of the nest like our swans do. And then we can come and check on the nest and we can actually take them, the eggs, to the egg research center and make sure that they get rubbed down with blaze powder so that they can hatch. They have the highest likelihood of hatching that way. Right now, I think it's only like a 10% chance that these eggs will hatch. But if you rub them with blaze powder once, then it goes up to like, I think 30 and twice it goes up to 50% chance that they're going to hatch. So that's pretty good. Hello, little owl. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, it's didgeridoo. Didgeridoo the owl. And she just laid like an egg right at us. That was kind of funny. All right, let's put a little nest maybe back here in this back corner. This is a little nook where the birds can kind of crawl in if they want to. I love visiting the Australian bird aviary. It's just so much fun. Hi, guys. Oh, and I haven't even shown you guys yet the super awesome new addition to the aviary. So let me go ahead and put this nest. I feel like we need a nest up in a tree. There we go. And then I accidentally knocked down these scaly tree ferns. So, oh, this flower is so pretty. Oh, if only we could get more of those flowers. Oh, I already put that scaly tree fern back. Oh, yeah. Well, I put a nest where I had the old scaly tree fern. So we'll just put that one down there. All right. So let me show you guys the new informational educational addition to the Australian bird aviary. Woo, Siri. I'm so afraid of heights. So every time I get to that glass bridge, it's a little bit of a doozy. All right, so as you guys know, the giraffe exhibit was the first place I made a sign, an interactive sign for our world. And it makes it so I don't have to have all of the facts rattling around in my head all the time. And so anyone who comes to visit our zoo can just stroll right up to the sign and they can learn facts about the different animals in our exhibits. And this is the very first Australian aviary bird identification guide. And it only touches on a small handful of the various birds that I hope to be represented here here in our Australian bird aviary. And remember, those kiwis are not Australian birds. They're just in here because I didn't have anywhere better to put them just yet. But here are three of the species I like to think are in here. And we don't really have anybody to represent the rose-breasted cockatoo or really even the black cockatoo just yet. But hopefully we'll be able to get some of those colors in our parrots in here sooner than later. All right. So we have the Gouldian Finch, which is my personal favorite, and they come in a huge variety of color combinations. Then we've got the Gal Parrot, which I have mostly only heard called the Rose-Breasted Cockatoo. And we have the Black Cockatoo. 
cockatoo as three birds native to Australia that I hope, little guy, there you are, that's you right there, one of your color morphs at least, that I hope will be represented here in our aviary as time goes on. So you can come over here. Dun dun! There is a sign hanging here that shows pictures of three Australian birds, some of which can be found in this very aviary. Would you like to learn more about these species? Don't forget to look for them in the aviary! And then you can come over and you can click on what you would like to learn more about. So the Gouldian Finch! The, which is this little guy who's like sitting here and learning. Oh, never mind. Well, he was sitting here and learning about himself. That was kind of cute. The Gouldian finch is a small, colorful finch from the northern part of Australia. They are brightly colored with multiple color variations. Some may have red heads, but others may have black heads, orange heads, or even blue. And we'll have another sign go up later showing all of the different color varieties. And don't forget, you guys, if you like these little finches, I have lots and lots of real life vlogs and bird seed diaries of my birds that we're constantly showing off including chickenberry who's our little tiny baby finch that has recently fledged and is doing quite well the Gullian finches are seed eaters who spend most of their life traveling in small flocks moving from area to area in search of seed and water they will often join mixed flocks of long-tailed finches and mast finches which would be really cool if we could get those species represented in here too perhaps as protection against predators before their population declined the birds were often seen in flocks of 1,000 to 2,000 individuals which is so cool so that's just one of the facts and when you come back we might even have more facts that we will add in about the Gouldian finch so I'm imagining that each one of these ID guides would probably have at least like one or two fact sets for each animal. And then if we wanted to be more specific, you could either go up to another like interactive section or you could maybe go to a computer that we could even have like more data, more information, or maybe a NPC who could be wandering around. <gasps> There's a Gouldian Finch egg! Who could be an expert on the Gouldian Finch or even like a tourist. We could even have guests or tourist NPCs wandering around that you could interact with and learn quite a bit about the tour or quite a bit about the um, Gouldian Finch from. So yeah, there's lots and lots of color varieties of Gouldian finch present there's the blue one and the blue one i have a blue one named blueberry and then up here this is the uh red-headed lilac chested and really most of my birds are red-headed lilac chested but they don't have uh too much of this blue coloration on top of their head so yeah it's <laughs> there's a lot of varieties it seems like the yellow variety their yellow color morph is one of the most popular ones that we have born here in our aviary which is quite exciting quite exciting indeed i wonder if we'll ever have an NPC like in the village of light who's going to want to have like one color morph maybe they'll fall in love with the blues for instance and they'll just want us to like bring them blues and they'll just have an aviary full of blue Gouldian finches <gasps> that'd be so pretty oh my goodness this rain is anyone else here we might try to sleep through this rain in a little bit all right and then really quickly the black cockatoo the red-tailed black cockatoo is a large black cockatoo native to Australia. They get their name from their black coloration and the bright red panels on the tails of mature males. Black cockatoos are usually found in eucalyptus woodlands and by waterways. They are seed eaters and cavity nesters, so they rely on fairly large trees in order to make their nest. A cavity nester means a bird or animal who nests inside of holes that grow in trees. Sometimes those holes are made when a branch falls off the tree and it just sort of rots out where the branch had been connected. Sometimes birds such as woodpeckers will actually physically dig out the holes in trees and sometimes you'll have different species one that will like say the woodpecker dig the hole and then other species like the black capped chickadee who will move into that hole in the tree even if they didn't build it and make it their home and they rely on those woodpeckers to make those cavities so that they can have their nest. It's very complex how you get like holes in trees. It's really amazing. All right. Uh, they are big birds after all. Although they feed on a a wide variety of native seeds, the largest part of their diet is eucalyptus seeds. And they actually have a really unique relationship with eucalyptus trees and eucalyptus seeds. And apparently they're terrible pest for peanut farmers because they like to descend in flocks and just rip peanut farms to shreds and eat tons and tons of peanuts. And then finally, we have the gal cockatoo. And I'm probably pronouncing that wrong because I've always heard of this cockatoo as the rose breasted cockatoo. And apparently it is even simply known as the pink and gray cockatoo. It is one of the most most common and widespread cockatoos of Australia. They can be found in high numbers throughout the entire mainland and have been introduced to Tasmania. The rose-breasted cockatoo has adapted quite well to urbanization of Australia. Their diet in the wild consists primarily of grasses, seeds, and insects found in open grassy areas. Open parks and grassy yards provide
provide plentiful places for them to hunt for food. So they like the big, flat, open, grassy areas, whereas the Ghoulian finches and the cockatoos kind of rely on more forested areas, especially because of how they nest. They nest in tree cavities and usually have clutches of three to five eggs. Often they create lifelong bonds with their mates, which is just so awesome. So there you go, you guys. Now when you come and visit the Australian bird aviary, you can learn some real life actual factual facts about the birds. And I don't have to be present and then we won't have to rely on the poor NPCs to talk themselves to death. And I just absolutely love that. And we put a whole bunch of nests. Okay, let's check on those nests we sprinkled around just really quickly. Just really quickly. Oh, is that another egg? <gasps> There's eggs everywhere. Oh my goodness. We'll take these eggs over to the egg research center. All right. Anything in the nest? Nothing in there yet. <gasps> Look, you guys. This parrot has laid an egg. Oh my gosh. Look, and the owl has already laid an egg. How cool is that? All right. Well, we won't, we won't bother them too much. I just want to take a quick picture. We won't bother them too much, but we'll go ahead and get a move on. Because speaking of eggs, it is past time to get on, on the road to the egg research center because at least we'll be able to get that far today and then we can continue on home tomorrow. But I'm just really excited. That's a little project I have been meaning to do for a long time. I just told myself, Siri, you sit down and get at least the very first bird identification guide put into the Australian bird aviary. You are supposed to be an educational facility, Siri. So that's what we did. All right, and then we're gonna close these and close these. Ah, and the rain stopped. Tay, I heard you pick a fish up just then. Well, that was really useful. The rain stopped just as we got here. All right, come on, Lily girl. All right, there we go. Wow, I love the mushroom jungle. It's so cool. And look at this. We've got some pretty awesome little little benches here. I love these benches. They're modeled off of the endangered... Um, the endangered species benches from Zoo Tycoon 2, and I really love them. So if you want to come and rest, then you can pop over here and just kind of watch the birds from outside the aviary. If you're a little bit nervous, some people are scared of birds, I understand. And you can just sit here and watch them from a safe distance. All right, and let's go look at that grave too, because you guys were so excited about the idea of having a banana botanist ghost. So our banana botanist that I want to add into this area of the zoo so that we have somebody who can tell you all about bananas and the good things about bananas and the history of bananas and the way that they are quite fascinating because they're actually herbivorous um, plants which is well like their 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 base is the same as herbs like um, thyme mint things like that but they just share a weird but like botanical family with them. They're not actually properly fruits the way you might understand a fruit being an apple. So very complicated. We'll talk about that later. And maybe the botanist Tad was killed by magic. Maybe it was a magic banana and he had lived 108 days. So maybe we'll have that botanist help us out in the future because you guys are super excited about him. Uh, and then maybe we'll take a quick little peek red pandas i can't wait to get their breeding project up and going that's gonna be fun all right and we're gonna run past our tigers we should hopefully have more informational little kiosks and booths there you go don't worry educator william we will be revamping this entire area to make it really really great for our tigers by getting up a little educational kiosk so you can have the interactive kiosk instead of the big giant selection <laughs> of books like this was the old way we tried to share information and it's okay but the kiosks definitely work out much better ah and then don't forget this little area you guys the gifts of island mangoes planted by derek this is a nice little mango grove that was planted by derek as a tree that he donated and i really really like it so you can come over here and you can get some refreshing mangoes let's gather these up to take home hey hey mango there we go so thank you, Derek. And there's even some deer that are hanging out near here. All right, we'll go ahead, collect up all this mango fruit. Oh, my little mango fruit fell in the water. Ah, oh, look at the cute little deer. They're so pretty. All right, and we'll gather this one up and this one. All right, thank you, Derek. Nice, refreshing mangoes. Maybe we'll make like a mango smoothie when we get home. And then let's get over to the egg research center for tonight. I know we spent a long time in the Australian bird aviary, but I just really love it in there, especially now that we have even more informational kiosks and all of our fish are dead. We worked so hard to get fish in here. That was the whole point of building the Tate and Tackle. And they were all killed by this giant log in the center. So I'm going to have to 100% remove that giant log. And then hopefully our future fish will survive. Very, very tragic. A very tragic turn of events. 
All right, and then here we are, the Egg Research Center, also known as the Egg Gathering Grove, the Oology Research Center, where we study all sorts of awesome eggs. And I really love how we've started kind of decorating it, and you can come over and you can look at different types of eggs right inside the nest, kind of handle them yourself if you so wish to. We will be having this area totally revamped. I will be redoing pretty much everything about it, how we display things, how we lay things out, the way you can like open it up and like look at the cassowary egg is so fun. But we're going to add in those informational kiosks in here as well so it can be a much more interactive area. And you guys can look, learn some amazing facts about like what the biggest egg in the world is, what the smallest egg in the world is, how long it takes to hatch an ostrich versus how long it takes to hatch a hummingbird, all sorts of cool things like that. All right. Oh, my Oh my gosh, how did you get out, little one? Do I have escape bees? Hello, pigeons. Oh gosh, no, I, I might need you for like some, some pigeon homing contest or something at some point. No, oh gosh. In you go, little guys. Ah, uh, somehow you still, ah! All right, well, I'm just gonna let that go. <gasps> Look, and then my little Cracker Jack. Cracker Jack, you have some presents for me. We've got some string. So that is Cracker Jack's and Cracker Jack's child who are carrying those pieces of string. They're magpies. So they actually find, somehow, from inside their enclosure, they actually find us different items that they collect and we can gather from them. All right, well, let me go ahead and put these eggs away really quickly. There's a bunch of pigeon eggs in here. There's a bunch of <laughs> pea fowl eggs in there. I really, I'm running out of room for my eggs. We have different types of places to store eggs. All right, what about Goulian finch eggs in here? Any parrot eggs? Any room for kiwi eggs over there? All right, clearly we need to make, oh my gosh, do I really have that many? Oh um, my goodness, I really have that many, <laughs> I, that many, um, Peafowl eggs. We're gonna have to do something about that. All right, so that these are actually the glowstone incubators that we keep the eggs inside of so that they stay nice and warm and toasty and nothing bad happens to them. Hello, little pigeons. I guess you can run around. And let's go ahead, Lily and Tay. I'm gonna have you two sit down. Stay outside, okay? I need to keep the store closed so that I don't have some escaping pigeons. All right, come on, Cracker Jack. Ah, Cracker Jack, you laid another egg. It didn't hatch into anything, but it did give me an eggshell. So now you can have some grass. That's actually pretty cool. You can have some grass to roll around in Cracker Jack. Um, I am going to destroy a little bit of it, though, so that there we go. So you can feed the bird seeds, and it will drop your string for you. And let's see. I don't want you to breed with your own child, Cracker Jack. I just want... Oh, dear. All right. Oh, okay, good. It looks like they didn't... Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right. Well, now we have a little mini Cracker Jack, so we've got more babies coming. <laughs> But they can fly around and have a good time inside of their area. And we have a new baby. It's eating some of the fruit in the fruit bowl. Oh my gosh. All right. And then down here at the very end, we used to have a lyre bird. But I think something happened to it with this blue bird. Uh, and we lost the lyre bird. But we also have some of my blaze chickens. And they're super awesome. And they actually drop a lot of blaze powder. We need to go and get the pickup item dropper. They'll actually pick up their blaze powders when I'm not physically present to do so. And then that way, when we come back, we should have a constant supply. Like that, see? Right there. We should have a constant supply of blaze powder to collect. Because that blaze powder is super duper useful. Hi, everybody. The blaze powder is super duper useful. Because you can come on over... And look at the swan egg, for instance. And you can combine the swan egg with a bit of blaze powder, and you can go from 10% chance to 30% chance of having a new little signet, which is a baby swan, born from inside the egg. And I really, really, really enjoy that. Oh, and I forgot we had an unidentified egg. I, we need to put that through the egg identifier. Ah, and props off, because you guys, all of these eggs, all of the birds that we've been looking at today, they're made by Pavo. And I'm still constantly pleased as Punch and just so tickled that he has decided to come and join our world and has done such an amazing job on his zoo too. Oh, and there's little tiny eggs and all these little tiny baskets everywhere. I love it. All right. Well, tomorrow we will continue working our way up towards home and we will go ahead and hopefully be able to get Fig the pig in safely with the zombie, the zo or not the zombie, with the vampire penguins and we'll be able to cure the zombie villagers and then we'll be able to turn around after we grab the glowstone and head back over to the giraffes to continue work in the safari zone. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.